In this tutorial, we're going to be building a chat with your documents project. This is a very useful and common application of AI that allows a person to use natural language to engage with documents, whether that be from PDFs, text files, Word docs, or other formats. Let's consider a use case for this capability. Meet Sam. He's a new employee at BusyBee Wealth Management, a startup that specializes in financial planning and investment management. As a new hire, Sam wants to quickly familiarize himself with the company's HR policies, but he's not sure where to start or who to ask. One of the first questions Sam has is about health insurance coverage. He wants to know what the company covers and what he'll be responsible for. Fortunately, BusyBee has an AI-powered HR assistant that can quickly and accurately provide this information. Sam simply types his question into the chatbot interface, what is health coverage insurance? And the AI quickly responds with detailed information about the company's health insurance plan. Likewise, he can do the same about overtime compensation policy. Now let's uh, do a quick demo of the chatbot in action. This is the first version that we'll build to show the QA aspect of the chatbot. We'll take the same engine in part two of the tutorial and integrate it into Slack, where a new employee like Sam would typically engage with this chatbot. Before we get into the details of the build, let's understand the concepts behind chat with your data applications and how they work. We'll be using two architectural diagrams to explain the concepts. The first one is about upserting, and then we'll move to querying in the next slide. The first diagram shows the components and flows involved in building and storing information that you want to chat with. This whole process is called upserting. Starting from left, we have the data source. It can be PDFs website, text files, or other documents. And next, we load this information using a loader, which is this box here. After loading the document, we split the documents into chunks with a component called the splitter. For each chunk, we go through a process called embedding. This is just a technical term for converting information into a set of numbers or vectors that the large language model can use to search for similar meaning. Once the embedding is done, each chunk is then stored as a set of numbers associated with a, the, the vector uh, corresponding to that into this database called a vector store. And this whole process uh, is called upserting. The, sec the second architectural diagram illustrates how users can query or ask questions about the data stored during the upserting step. For example, a user might ask, what is the vacation policy? Once the question is asked, we represent uh, the user's question in numerical form, also through a process called embedding. So this uh, embedding, going through the embeddings model will convert the query into a set of vectors that then goes into the vector store. And there is a similarity search that is done with the information that's stored in the vector store and the uh, query represented in numerical form. After the matching is done, the vector store retrieves the most relevant uh, chunks of uh, information from the vector store. And then it adds that chunk into the large language model context and asks the large language model to then answer the question based on the information that it's retrieved from the vector store. In this way, the large language model then is able to see context from the, the, the uh, vector store and answer the question appropriately. Now that we have a good understanding of the foundational concepts, the next natural question is, what vector database should I use? Choosing the appropriate vector database for storing vector formats plays an important role in determining what the architecture should be, compliance, and future costs. Now, there are a lot of factors to consider, and this uh, diagram uh, shows you that there are many uh, facets to it. But there are two uh, main categories of vector database to consider, independent vector databases and vector database search in existing databases. For independent vector databases that are uh, specializing in uh, vector stores, such as Pinecone, 
they may offer additional benefits, but uh, one of the careful considerations is added complexity and cost. On the other hand, for vector searches in existing databases like uh, Supabase, which is built on top of PostgreSQL, uh, we can reduce architectural complexity and eliminate extra compliance concerns, uh, which could provide a quite cost-effective solution uh, to uh, implement the, your vector store. So there are other factors to consider, but for this tutorial, we'll be using Supabase as it is a very popular option that's open source and uh, supports um, uh, H uh, HIPAA and uh, uh, SOC 2 compliance, and it's built on top of existing SQL databases, reducing architectural complexity and extra compliance concerns. So it also has a good free tier, which is uh, useful to get started. So let's go ahead and set up our Supabase database. All right, I have logged into my supabase.com and I've signed up for an account. Now I'm going to the home page of my dashboard and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call my new project Ask HR. I'm going to give it a password. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project. This will take a couple of minutes, uh, but what I can do in the meantime is I'm going to want to copy the secret role. So the secret or the service role secret, I'm going to copy that because I will need to use that in my NA10. So I'll copy that and save it in a secure place. And then the other thing I'll need to copy is the URL. So there is a URL that I have here that it's going to uh, give me access to my database. So I'll copy this and I'll save that in the, in a safe place as well. All right. So it's in the process of uh, creating this database and in a moment, it's already created it. So it's, it's uh, quite fast. Now, what... all right, I'm going to go to the SQL editor and I'm going to go quick starts inside here. I have a line chain quick start. So I'll go ahead and pull that up. And there's some uh, SQL here that I can uh, initialize my, uh, my database uh, with uh, a table called documents, as well as a function called match documents that allows me uh, to uh, search uh, for embeddings. All right, so I'll go ahead and run it. Oops, let me try it again. All right, so it's run successfully. And if I look at my table editor, I'm going to have a table called documents. So now I'm all set up. Now that we've set up the database, let me first describe the upsetting flow that we're going to build in NA10. So from the left, we're going to have access to Google Drive. In the link to the resources, there's a good two minute video from the NA10 team on how to set this up. So we'll store the HR policy file in our Google Drive as the source of the documentation we want to chat with. Once this file is loaded, we're going to go through that process that we described earlier about splitting the document, chunking it, and then going through the embedding process to create vectors. So we're going to split it with this splitter here, and we're going to specify the type to be text file. And we're going to use this embeddings model to then store it into our vector database. So let's go ahead and build this flow. All right, we'll go ahead and add a workflow. And then we're going to start with a manual trigger. Next, I'm going to add my Google Drive. And I'm going to use it to download a file from my Google Drive. I've already set up my Google Drive account. I'm going to specify that I want to download a file. And I'm going to select from my list a URL. From this URL, I'm going to add in the location of my text file. So I'll go ahead and test the step. And it's downloaded it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add in my, my, my vector store. So I'll go into Advanced AI. I'm going to go into my vector store. I'm going to choose Supra, Supra base vector store here. And I'm going to uh, use insert documents. And 
all right, connect it to my Google Drive. I will add in my embedding model. So I will go in here and type embedding. So I'll go ahead and add this. I've already created my OpenAI credentials. So I will now hook it up to my embeddings. For the document, I want to get, uh, all right, I'm going to search for default data loader. And I'm going to uh, take the type binary. And it will be of text format. All right, and so I'm going to hook it up now to document. And for the text splitter, I'm going to use a, this recursive character text splitter. So I'll use that. And I'm just going to specify a relatively large chunk size. So this helps get more context. Uh, and, and we have some pretty good uh, uh, big models uh, that uh, take up to 16K of context size. So I'll just use this big chunk size. And then uh, specify a bit of overlap so that uh, it increases um, all of retrieval. All right, next we're going to configure our uh, settings for the vector store. So I'll go into this node, and then I'm going to update the host. So we got the host parameters from when we first created the database. So we'll specify this. And then uh, the uh, service role secret, we'll copy also from when we first created the database. So go ahead and do that. And then we'll connect the database. So it's connection successful, so it's good. All right, so we've saved that. And now uh, we have, what else are we missing? Uh, yes, we need to specify the documents table. So we'll go ahead and specify that. All right, and now it's fully uh, operational. So what we're going to do is go ahead and test this out. I'm going to uh, test this workflow. And uh, what we'll do is it'll load from this Google Drive the uh, text document, and then I'll upsert into my vector store. So I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so we can see that the workflow has uh, been successfully uh, executed. And if I go into database, what we'll see if we look at our uh, documents, is that uh, we have the vectors now stored into this database. Now that we've created the upserting flow, we're going to create the second part of the flow, which is the querying part. So if, if you can see from this diagram, what we're going to do is uh, we'll start with the manual uh, chat message trigger here. And then we'll use uh, our vector store retrieval to take the query, uh, vectorize it, and then go to the vector store to find the closest similarity from the embeddings. And then we'll have uh, that retrieval added into the context uh, for our large language model to answer questions, all right? So let's go ahead and build that. OK, so we're going to start uh, building our querying flow. Uh, so uh, we have our um, upserting flow here. Uh, so we can add in another flow into this canvas. We're going to start by searching for the uh, chat trigger. So this tells NA10 uh, for, uh, to, to start up a chat interface. Then I'm going to add in, go to my advanced AI, and I'm going to do a question and answer chain. So this is um, a, uh, a a node in LangChain, uh, which uh, is designed for question answering, which is uh, you know what we want in this case. So uh, why don't we create the model? So again, we're using OpenAI. So we'll use the chat model here. Select the credentials. Now I'm going to use a slightly bigger model. So uh, ChatGPT 3.5 has several uh, variants. This one, uh, Turbo 16, has a larger context window. So uh, it makes uh, Q&A uh, a little easier when you have a large context uh, window. So I'll select this one. And then uh, for the retriever, I'm going to use a vector store. And from that vector store, uh, it's fine. I'll, I'll pick the top four in the query. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, super base vector store. And then from it's already selected the account. It's going to uh, retrieve uh, documents. And then I'm going to get from this table. All right. So I'm going to then also use my OpenAI embedding. All right. Select this here. 
and that's it. So I'm going to now uh, go ahead and, and uh, uh, start the chat. All right, so I'll test the workflow. I'll say chat, and I'm just going to type here, uh, what is the vacation policy? So uh, what it's doing here is that when I execute this question, it's going into uh, my vector store. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, it's just telling you all the things it's doing. Uh, the query to the vector store is what is the vacation policy? This gets uh, uh, transformed into a vector. And then it goes into the um, uh, documents table. And then it finds uh, a match to the vector or the, the vector that uh, closely matches this. And it comes up with uh, four examples. And then it takes all of this content um, that, that we've uh, uh, matched. And then all that is put into the large language model and we call it again. And then the large language model uses that to answer this question, all right? So I'm gonna just ask another question. What is the compensation? What is the overtime policy? I'm asking the same, and uh, it does the same thing. It goes into the vector store and helps us get the right information. And, and this is indeed what's in the handbook, All right? Great, so um, in you know, about 15, 20 minutes, uh, you're able to go through and build your own uh, chat with your own data application. And uh, these are the two workflows, upserting and querying. Now, in uh, part two of the tutorial, we'll be hooking this up to a Slack interface. So exactly the same engine, but uh, using Slack. So this is where an employee uh, may uh, more naturally interact with this information.